Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So, apologies there, just for the bit of typing, just had to post the links out there on the Discord. And um, I assume this gets shared, I don't know, to Twitter. I don't even think I use Twitter anymore, to be fair. But hello, hello, hello. So, we do have a few issues to address, first of all, and that is namely the, um, the production. We are, once again, seeing a halt in production at Tokyo. Now, this is a situation that could have been long um, avoided had I been paying more attention. But we need at least 50,000 uh, tons of resources here. I don't know what the actual usage is of the resources or Tokyo's industry. Uh, but we can amend this situation. It can be fixed. So let's see here. Oil and resources, perhaps. Make faster convoys, cut out uh, slow ships. Yep, saw the comment not too long ago. I'll have to take a look at that one. Uh, right now, heavy industry. Uh, resource history. That's Honshu. Hmm. So supposedly these factories in China are seeing a failure in production, though that may be to enemy ships there. Now this is the issue here, is the lack of resources at Tokyo itself. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mean we can see here this is obviously impacting production massively. So this is a situation that we do need to resolve ASAP. We literally cannot have this go on any longer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, our resources are right faster. Now what we're going to do is we're going to immediately try to alleviate the situation. I could completely shut down the production for a time. But what I will do is I will have this task force routed from Hakodate all the way to Tokyo immediately. So at least that will be 70,000 tons of resources heading there as soon as humanly possible. Uh, now they're just, uh, well they're some time away from being full. I think what we might need to do is actually uh, have a Port Arthur convoy head for Tokyo itself. Uh, basically massively up the numbers of stockpiles, well the number of resources in the stockpile. But what we'll do as well is we'll take a look at the other centers for resources. You can see here the resource storage here is on, so that's 170,000. Uh, so what I will do is I'm going to turn off the resource stockpiling in the other centers. Now basically the reason for this is I want to have all the resources be funneled towards Tokyo. How it works is basically um, all of these centers of production are linked to via this rail network. I do believe... Um, if the rail network is of a certain level and is connected to other centers, then resources are automatically moved down along the system. Uh, which is why Shanghai collects so much, basically. Uh, you can see here, resource stockpile, uh, only 54,000, actually not a huge, huge amount. Uh, yes, production halt, we basically had a shortfall of resources in Tokyo, so we are trying to address that situation as we speak. Hello there, Carl, how you doing? And sub there, Sultan. It's nice to see you, my dude. Right. So I need to start stockpiling resources here ASAP. Uh, I'm going to stockpile fuel as well, whatever we have available. As we need that. Uh, but yes, all these resources will head down here to Shanghai. Just need to make sure that they will do that. Nanking. Uh, we do need some resources in these centers of production. So I will turn them on now. I think Nanking is actually producing, but we'll have to find out. Hmm. Nanking produces no resources of her own. Okay, Su Shao. Indeed. So, all of these centers of production on the actual network will send their resources down to Shanghai now. Well, which is what they should be doing. Uh, which is why it's really quite important that we actually have taken these uh, production centers. And the fact that uh, Changchao actually produces resources is actually very, very useful. Of course, we do have a lot of resources being produced in uh, Manchuria and Korea, which is very, very nice. 
But even over here, we still have uh, centers of production. We do have quite a lot of resource production down this way, which is quite interesting. Uh, what we may have to actually do is run potentially convoys up to Changsha to uh, carry those resources back down. Yeah, there we go, 110 resources, that's quite a lot. 40 there. Uh, 40 there. 80 there. That's actually quite a good amount of resource production. Another 36 over here too. Plenty of resources down at Canton. And Hong Kong too. Now Hong Kong does have a huge stockpile. But what I'll do is I'll basically stockpile resources here for the heavy industry. Okay. So if we go back... Uh, oil and resources, regional factories and resources. Now, let's see. So Tokyo has failed, obviously this means that there's not enough resources there. Uh, we're running a shortfall, yeah, seems like it's below 54,000 tons, that's what we need. Uh, Nagayo, Nagoya, uh, seems like supplies, potentially, I'm not entirely sure what SY stands for. But we'll have to take a look at that uh, situation immediately, uh, try to address it ourselves, and if we can do. Uh, Nagoya. God, I wish more about uh, Japanese cities, to at least know where they are. Hmm. And there's a quicker way, obviously, I could just uh, look on the base map. Oh, there's Nagoya. Okay, what issue do we have here, then? You do have plenty of resources in stockpile. Uh, phew, you should be okay, actually. Hmm. Yeah, Nagoya is right in the center. I <laughs> just found it. So then, Rez, how are you doing, my friend? Yes. Okay. So we need to get this going. This should be by all rights okay, actually. Right. Let's check on China. Right, there we go. Now we've got it basically working. And it goes basically at the heart of Japanese industry. <laughs> Right, so you can see this has failed over here as well. Resource production. Uh, so there's Kaoping. I'm going to wager Kaoping is on the front lines potentially. Actually, not entirely sure where the base is. So I think what would be the easiest thing. Actually, it's in northern China. So it should be around here somewhere. That's pretty cool. It's definitely here somewhere. Just quickly check the name again. Kaoping. Okay. Uh, we'll look on the actual bases over here and that'll make things significantly easier. Uh, well, it will if I start actually look at the right thing. So, let's see. Uh, bases. Uh, 
intriguing. Okay. <laughs> it's like the Japanese Detroit. <laughs> right then. So this is something I should get used to checking. Hmm. Yeah, cow ping. A cow ping. I'm less than missing it. I've not seen it there. Is it counted as a airfield? Ah, uh, how you doing, Snake? How you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've only been going in about 11 minutes, so that's pretty good. Oops. Right, camping. No, I'm not seeing that. That's interesting. Okay, but either way, we'll address the situation in Japan by sending far more resources to Tokyo itself. That's not a huge stockpile. What do we actually have present here in Nagoya? Uh, Nagoya is actually not modelled. See, I've been looking at a uh, new mod here called uh, RHS. And that's something I do want to actually take a look at. Now, basically what it does is it, ba well, it dramatically overhauls the actual resource and economics of uh, one of Pacific. And, you know, I'm really rather interested in it. I think I'm going to have to take a look at it and uh, just see what I can do. Uh, it's one of those of, uh, if it is actually found to be a superior system, do we continue? Do we start a new campaign or do we uh, stick with one or just start completely with another? So I think that's something that I'd really have to think about and really have to take a good look at. It might be worthwhile doing a couple of videos in RHS or at least other mods just to sort of get a feel for them. Uh, right, so we are looking for resources that we can send immediately to uh, Tokyo just to alleviate the situation as much as humanly possible. Uh, well, we have turned off uh, resource storage in other locations, so they should now flow down to Tokyo a little bit easier. There's not many actual uh, places that uh, have heavy industry. You can see why we actually take these resources to Nagasaki as well as uh, Fukuoka and uh, Shimonaski. Basically, we move those resources into there so that they don't have to stop out them. He has to do with this one, he invested so much in, <laughs> time into it. Well, this is it, but at the end of the day, if there's a superior one out there, I think we'd have to look. <laughs> Ah, uh, man, we'll, we'll see how far we can get. I do have great hopes of this. I am hoping for the absolute best. Uh, so the situation in the Pacific is rather interesting, to say the least. I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop the expansion, well, expansion over here, as there's really nothing going on. Uh, um, so they crushed off. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, it'd be nice if Singapore was to fall. It'd be very, very bloody nice. Okay. Now, we did lose a lot of pilots and a lot of aircraft, which is rather unfortunate, but, eh, so is losses in war. Though, what we will do is, we're going to target our Palambang with a naval attack. Or even a port attack. A port attack might do well. The reasoning for this is, well, we take a look at that port capacity. Sure, it's only level 4. But it may, it seems to have a lot of allied activity. I also do note these ships over here, which is remarkably interesting. I think we might be able to actually risk naval attacks, but I feel like a port attack could be quite good. Though it does rather interest me that these are potential warships. Very much so. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we lost one of our best pilots in the raids over here, which was a real disappointment, to be honest. Okay, so I think what we might do then is, let's see. We could go for the... We could go for naval attack and then slash port attack. So I think if we select... Right, group currently out of range. Okay. So I'll set our target at Palambang. I'd go after the naval attack, you reckon? In the first airfield attack, I'd go after Airpa has been attired. Well, this is it. 
Hmm. There's so much oil there, just so, so much oil and the refinery is beautiful. Hello there, Andy, how you doing, my friend? I think what we'll do then is, even if you lose a BB, who cares? <laughs> I like my battleships, I really do want to actually convert them on in the future. There's certain battleships that can be converted to have uh, aircraft, which is something I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, what have I missed? Uh, not too particularly much. Uh, Tokyo's production has uh, stopped for the time being, as we need to uh, push resources into her, but we will do that. Okay, these are all the Congo class. Yes, indeed, the Kirishima too. Nagato. Uh, Mutsu. Fusu. Uh, Fuso can be converted. Indeed, she can be converted into something of a carrier. Uh, which I do fully intend to do. If she survives, I will definitely, definitely convert her. The reason being 22 aircraft. That's no, that's no bloody laughing matter. That is actually quite a formidable amount. I do feel that the aircraft could be significantly more useful, and you imagine that, she'd be able to act as an independent sort of raiding party. Do you think it would have been, uh, do you think if you would have used your resources from the start to beat the British Americans and not to beat China, things would be a lot better for you? Uh, well, it's an interesting question, actually. It's one of those of, uh, do we really have that luxury? Because the Chinese will not have, uh, stood still. They would have continued to gain an expanding power. They would have definitely been breathing down our necks, and the Chinese are more than capable of launch, uh, launching, a f well, actual effective offensives. So, we already have many forces in China that are able to deal with the situation. We've conquered a good amount. We're trying to clean up this area over here and really try to solidify things. If we draw on the map, uh, that'll make things easier. I'd probably split the carriers and send them north, bring another battle, uh, BB Guru from Hong Kong to protect the Kiributai, and send the current battleships from Kiributai south. You'll use your current fighters to provide uh, combat air patrol for the BBs. True, true, very true. In fairness, what I could do is uh, have a group of battleships and then have the two uh, escort carriers, Taiyo and. Was it Taiyo? Taiyo and Hosho, uh, equipped with zeros and basically have them run combat air patrol for the actual battleships. Could be quite effective. Uh, but yes, let's draw on the map here then. So, we'll draw a uh, yellow for the Chinese. So, if we take a look at roughly the areas they control. I mean, obviously this might be... It's not too far from the truth, really. Yeah, it's not too far from the truth. I mean, of course, well, actually, it's just, uh, quickly, uh, redo that part there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I uh, watching your stream yesterday. I was wondering how much the Chinese are benefiting from not having the, uh, not having Burma taken by the Japanese. Uh, they're benefiting a great deal. They actually do receive supplies each and every turn. Uh, the reason is we well, and that's one of the reasons why we need to defeat China so that we can actually just defeat that, just end that, uh, which is easier said than done. Uh, we are working towards that goal. I do need to secure the Dutch East Indies before I can start looking at Burma. Uh, but once, once we are in that position, then we will definitely bring the Burma Road to an end and close it for good. Okay, so, if we take a look at this then. So these are the areas of uh, China that we control. I'm just going to draw them on here just to make things a little bit easier to see. Uh, helps make things a little bit easier to explain to. Okay. So that is quite a large difference in area now. Can you imagine all the resources in this area is actually quite massive. Uh, so what we have to do then is uh, first and foremost we need to continue to head down this rail line. God that's a terrible arrow. And uh, we continue to head down this rail line, we secure the cities on this rail line 
and the good thing about that is it does actually give me a nice springboard. You take a look at this, so this runs from Changsha all the way up here, and from Changsha all the way down to Kukong, which isn't too far from Canton, uh, isn't too far from Keiwang, uh, Keiwang, uh, Kei, Kuei, Kuei Yang, which isn't too far from Chuking. So in reality, controlling this rail network does give us an extreme advantage. It uh, is rather remarkable. Nanning uh, would be very nice. What we need to do then is basically, let's just get rid of all this. Uh, what I wanted to do here is I wanted to establish a front line like that, basically. So the Chinese are only basically relegated to these areas in the rear. Uh, they will still be a massive problem, but at the end of the day, if I position maybe one to two divisions on uh, rough terrain or mountainous terrain, have them really dig in and fortify, and the Chinese are going to find it almost impossible to dig them out. And we're going to gain these resources. At the end of the day, we are in China for the resources we need to actually really exploit it. Ideally, we can do that and uh, wage a successful long war. I mean, what you guys have to bear in mind is... Well, this war was dictated by resources. It's an economic war, basically. Uh, the entire reason Japan is in China and Korea and Manchuria is for resources. It is for those and those alone, really, in, uh, in all honesty. It's like uh, the reason for the war was basically uh, different powers tried to dictate to the Japanese Empire that basically, right, you have to surrender these gains. Uh, you are going to be forced to be chained to importing, which is something that the Japanese uh, really couldn't accept. Uh, so the war escalated, well it escalated from there, basically Japan started, uh, well wanted to in, uh, yes, uh, Japan wanted to create autarky, so basically a local economy for them alone. So they needed resources of course, they needed to secure land and those resources. So the entire Pacific War is basically can Japan establish a successful autarky or will the Allies disrupt that autarky and bring it to a dramatic end, collapsing it basically, so that Japan was unable to fight back? At least that's how things seem in my opinion. And this is how we need to think and fight. It'd be brilliant if we could actually deliver a decisive uh, blow to the enemy, which we certainly can. This is the beauty of the carriers. Uh, we can project that power and really throw it into the critical, well, into the critical moment. Uh, sadly, we haven't been able to find any American carriers for some time now, but that isn't really a bad thing. We're the ones who are operating our carriers, we're the ones throwing our weight around, uh, which is a good thing, which is something that we do need to definitely consider, well, really up in, in terms of uh, power projection. We need to be more aggressive, if anything. Okay, so, on that note... Uh, right, naval attack and then port attack. Uh, might be too risky to go for the port attack as of this moment in time, so we'll stick to naval attack. Or do we go for the port attack? It's one of ours. Um, hmm. Port capacity is very large down here. Let's see, which is the largest port in the area? Though, if I do flush them out of Lambang, we could be quite well off. I mean, this is obviously the largest port in the area. It's just the issue of the, um... Bloody AA, that's that's the problem. Hmm. Okay. I think all we need to do then is we need to shut down all naval power of the Allied forces in the area. So they must be set to naval attack. 59% uh, bombing accuracy. I think we might try a lower altitude just to see what that's like. That might be quite nice. Just turn the music down a little bit. There we go. Yeah, we'll try something like that. How many carriers are you willing to lose before you admit defeat? <laughs> We're not going to lose any carriers. <laughs> uh, we'll drop that down to about 11,000 feet. I'd like to see if that does make a difference. Okay, hello there, Cassie. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, use your BB advantage here. Well, that is very true. Again, down to 11,000 feet. I mean, the accuracy is not exactly great here. Okay, uh, set the range up, of course. Right out. So, Kitabutai is going to move uh, back north for the time being. Uh, I will consider splitting Kitabutai, and I will consider using these battleships. It's just a matter of how, really. And once we do have air supremacy, it's going to be rather interesting. 
This is like what happened at the Battle of Javasie, except you have spare battleships. <laughs> Indeed. The reason why I have all these battleships concentra uh, concentrated in this area is uh, predominantly for their AA capabilities more than anything. Uh, their only real threat was the B-25s and they are gone. Hmm. The Mitchells are still effective. We have shot down a good amount of them, which is pretty, f well, bloody brilliant. Uh, these Zeros, they need, they need to be rescued. A great deal of them are damaged. Ah... Uh... Do you have Yamato yet? Uh, no, uh, I wonder where Yamato is being constructed actually, that's rather interesting. I suppose, uh, let's take a look here then, so... Ship availability perhaps. Right, Yamato is here in 54 days. She'll arrive at Hiroshima. Uh, Musashi will arrive December 1st, 1942. Looking at 37 days until uh, Junior. Okay. I uh, go for those light cruisers. Well, we'll set them to naval attack. So we'll stay in this area. In fairness, um, let's see. What we'll do here then is we'll increase the actual percentage on combat air patrol. To about 40%. Now actually 30% potentially. Yes, our uh, 30% will remain here. And I think what we will do then is actually we will stick in this area for a little bit longer then. Um, our reinforcements are some time away, so what we'll do then is once they're nearby. Uh, they're over here somewhere. Yeah, they're over there. Yeah, we'll stick in this area and we'll try to actually hit the light cruisers. Uh, but we'll move away from the submarine over here. Okay. Uh, the I-400. I'm not entirely sure. Potentially so. Is that the submarine aircraft carrier? Hmm. Okay. Amphibious. Uh, these troops are loading up over here, so we'll be able to move them shortly. Or now. That's very good. Okay, we're going to move these engineering units. And I'm going to move them over to Borneo, I believe. There we go, airfield. Uh, I could do with moving some AA over as well. Though in fairness, if I do finish the conquest of Borneo, at least start to push that, that'd be quite good. It will give us a great position. But I need to move troops while I have the capability to do so now. Okay. I hear the Dutch uh, submarines are actually effective in sinking some ships in the South China Sea. Uh, double check your attack order on the CVs just in case for your next round. Yeah, definitely. Uh, see, I don't know why the um, bloody uh, squadrons went out and attacked multiple airfields. I was rather irritated by that. Okay. Val's naval attack. Naval attack. 30% uh, on combat air patrol. That should be fine and dandy. Right, we need a decent airfield over here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dispatch some troops, actually. Uh, these men will march over here. I need to deal with whatever this is. Then what I need to do is make sure that this air base... Well, the, the actual airfield is actually defended. Uh, then we're a level 3 airbase over here. That'd be very nice. That'd be very good to use. Okay. We are going to start marching here. I know I've always said no, but we need to just get on with it. Okay. Now, something I might consider is the fact there's only 480 troops here. It may be worthwhile to actually try to use barges, but I would like some reconnaissance information. So what I'll do is I'm going to transfer you. 
over here. Now, what I'd like you to do is actually drop that altitude dramatically. I don't know what the best altitude is for them, but I'm going to drop it. Um, I'll have them run search, of course. Right, there we go. Keep some in reserve. Bunch of troops over here. Uh, but yes, what we're going to do then is we're going to move these troops over to uh, Malacca. Never able to reach the location? Over at Patani. Okay, that's an irritation. Right, march your keysters to Singora. Irritating that I have to unpack, oh well. Though. I could simply move them via ship. So we'll do that instead, actually. Uh, at least in this fashion, we're not wasting a lot of time. Type B1. <laughs> right, fast transport. Plenty of destroy minesweepers here. I'd very much like to use them. Uh, right, let's see. Amphibious. We'll have the Minesweepers Act. Uh, would actually rather, rather... They're very slow, actually. Right. They do have AA, though. These guys do have some AA. Not a huge amount. We'll throw them all in anyway. There's fuel here. Okay. No troops. Right, so we need to change them. Oh, of course, they need to move to the north. Uh, to Padani. Uh, we'll head you, I'll have you head up over here, which isn't going to take you long at all. Can start loading some troops on there, which would be quite nice. Johoburu, Kotoburu. Right, have that one move up. Just have the rest of them move up as well. Yeah, a few of them still remain. A lot of ready pilots here. However, not many planes. This squadron will be enlarged in September, though. But that's quite some time away. So in fairness, I could release all these pilots, and then they will head back out. So I'll do then is I'll release 10 of the least experienced. Uh, we need 9. So, retain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, release the rest. Right, there we go. 9 pilots. Well, technically only 8 serviceable aircraft. So, if I could uh, get rid of another one. Uh, but what I will do then is I will have them on training. At least we can make some actual use of them. Uh, men, we are going to cross the Pacific in barges. The soldier officer command if that is a good plan. Of course, we will. <laughs> well, crossing they run into some cruisers. Yeah, that'd be horrific.
Hmm. Run training. At the end of the day, while they're here, we might as well. Reconnaissance will be moved up. I need to get a better amount of information coming in here. I don't know what the best is, but I'm going to go with 6,000. Uh, naval search would be quite good too. Right. Have them run sweep. Right, these are all reconnaissance actually. Intriguing. Right, have them transfer to Johor Bahru. At the end of the day, if I can increase my reconnaissance in this area, that will be considerably more helpful. At least I'll have an idea of what we're dealing with. I mean, some of these are actually really remarkably good reconnaissance aircraft. Uh, so what we'll do then is... Hmm, can't handle that many grooms. Now, in fairness, this is... Uh, I'll spam that current air group for the time being. In fairness, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. I'd rather have these combined, but it's going to be a bit of a pain in the arse to combine them. I mean, 421, that is actually a remarkably large number, but there's only 29 ready pilots, so we do need 13 more. So that brings us up to 42. So that is a very large squadron, very, very large squadron. Uh, make sure you have a reconnaissance flying over there, okay. Uh, not a bad idea, actually. I think I could uh, transfer some others, that'd be quite nice. Um, it's good to see them. So I'm going to have them run with the actual um, Majigars. Drop tanks. Let's see. I should have some more reconnaissance elsewhere. Um, I'd love to resize them manually. That'd be great. Hmm. There's actually quite a decent amount here. What are the pilots like? Not bad. Not bad, actually. In fairness, what I could do with doing then is actually transfer them to potentially Bangkok. Yeah, we'll transfer them to Bangkok. Change that altitude down to about 15,000 feet. Uh, give them... Drop tanks. Ah, hey there. Tell me how you did, my friend. Right, let's see if we can find some reconnaissance to fly over Burma then. We will have some somewhere. Right, see, these are actually decent looking bombers. What are the pilots like? HW's not terrible either. That's decent. Right, so we'll transfer you over. Uh, how are things with you all? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, man? I'm actually working on the Flectown, uh, Flectarn, ah, loadout at the moment. Like, uh, I'm trying to get that going. It's like, you know what, I was actually looking for the M27 IAR that I have, well, the a AEG. Uh, I was looking for the legitimate stuff like the Marines actually use, and my god, the sling is 60 quid. The actual sling attachment, like the little bit that attaches to the rail, is bloody 60 quid. I'm like, god damn, I'm not paying 120 pounds. Good lord, that's a lot. Atria? Or Austria? <laughs> Okay, we'll have them fly from Hong Kong, actually. Alright, here we go with some reconnaissance. 
Wait, are these torpedo bombers? These are torpedo bombers. Strange. Okay, we'll transfer some reconnaissance out in the future. Right. Transfer you to the Philippines, to Manila. God, they've been doing practically nothing. There we go. <laughs> it's alright, dude. Okay, we'll transfer you. Uh, I'll transfer them to Hong Kong, actually. If we have them run naval search, that could be quite handy. Reasoning may be this will help us actually figure out where the enemy submarines are. I've had a lot of planes that I really haven't been using, which is quite sad, really. Okay, I could do with transferring these out elsewhere. Uh, they're dropping supplies at Kukong. Uh, let's see. Um, it's a good question where to drop them. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand down the squadron. I want the planes to actually uh, repair, so I'm going to set all transports to stand down. I want them to all be repaired and ready. And then what we'll do is we'll have them fly over to Manila. Um, no, over to... Actually, even potentially Manila. Potentially Manila. Uh, though, more than likely, we'll transfer them to Malaya. The reason being, I can actually use them to support our troops out in the field and try to push up with more supplies. Or even elsewhere could be quite good. Okay. That's quite a lot of aircraft. What can I upgrade them to? In fairness, I could upgrade them to the KA-48s, which is probably a good idea. Let's take a look at the KA-48. Yeah, that's a much better aircraft. Okay, yep, yeah, we'll uh, upgrade you to KA-48. Upgrade now. So there we go, that's another 31 ready. So obviously they're going to need to be overhauled. Uh, take about uh, a week to two weeks. At the end of the day, once they're ready, that's going to be great. Upgrade to the Jakes, give them some time too. I think what we need to do is actually upgrade a great majority of our aircraft. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there is one called uh, Gary Grisby's Warner Pacific War Plan Orange, but it's a little bit too out of date, to be fair. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a really interesting scenario. I really wish it had more, like, love. Okay, we do have some reconnaissance flights over here, of course, that we transferred. That'd be great. Uh, naval search. Let's have you upgrade to the Jenks. Upgrade you now. Oh, God's sakes. There we go. But this is great. I mean, their range is going to be a standard. I think we need to do this all across the board, really. Uh, well, War Plan Orange um, is the conflict between Japan and the Allied forces. It's a theoretical conflict uh, that breaks out. I mean, War Plan Orange was basically, um, well, to do with the Japanese. It was based on the Japanese, the Rainbow Plans. Okay, oh great. I mean, look at the difference in range. That's another four hexes. That that's pretty significant.
There we go. These are level bombers. Running out of field attack. Okay. Let's see what we have in Manchuria that's available to be transferred. Is construction actually quite nice? Hmm. So the art's already moved down. I do need to increase the art uh, well, the amount of artillery we have across the board. Especially in this area, so I'm going to have them move to Xinjiang. That sounds pretty interesting. Okay, the aircraft over here, I think we need to transfer out these bombers. So many of them are damaged. Though, in fairness, what I could do is actually transfer some airfield engineers over there. These are all transports. Hmm. Garrison units ready to move, actually. Okay, this base force I'm going to move up over to here so they can be, uh, they can help the aviation over there. They clearly do need it. Okay. Uh, quite a large amount of uh, <laughs> aircraft over there now. Hmm. Construction. Aviation. Yeah, there's not enough aviation support here. We need to increase that. They're going to move out. I need you to take a look here. So, is it even aviation school? I suppose I could figure it out, but I should take a look at the base. So, cut up a rule. Aviation support 46. Yep, that's pretty good. So we'll move those guys out. So how about a single order? Move these guys too. Have them move to Johoburu. Okay. So Singora needs no garrison. It's always handy to have some troops nearby. I could move them elsewhere. I don't imagine the Allies are making these sort of moves, so I can have these guys transfer to Malacca. Okay, so Victoria Point. No garrison required. In fairness, uh, stop all that expansion. Well, actually, the airfield. The airfield's good enough. The airfield's good enough. That'll do for now. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to move you back to civilization. I 
wonder where Southern Army actually is. Well, either way, that was looking about enough. Of course, we do need fuel to arrive over here, but it is on its way. Fuel there. Uh, looks like the boat can arrive roughly about the same time, which is quite interesting. Good number of submarines off the coast of the American, well, off the American coastline. Okay, things are starting to pick up, you know. Uh, we're loading up troops here, loading supplies here, so that they can be taken uh, back over to the base here. Unloading supplies here. It's looking good, you know. Starting to look up. Uh, I do, of course, need fuel here. But we can move fuel from truck. And... Let's start to load some fuel here. Hello there, Abaddon. How you doing, my friend? Well, we've, um... We're going to address the situation in Tokyo, basically, regarding the... Uh, production... Uh, shortfall. But other than that, we've upgraded a few uh, aircraft, we've dictated some orders, we changed direction basically. Oh, I need to actually combine these troops. Well, re reorganize these troops now. Uh, do I have a garrison requirement here? Uh, I do, which is irritating. Right. Sixth division. There we go. We'll uh, have 6th Division combine again. What is this? 6? Right, A. I need garrison forces moved up over here. A Division. Right, that's the 15th. Have them moved back. 15th B Division. Okay, so the 15th Division is going to reform over here. That's 14th. 3rd Division. 14th looks to be over here. Yep, as well as 6th Division. What I need then is I need to move a garrison force up here. Plenty, plenty here. These infantry brigades will do. So we'll have them um, set off to Wuxiang. Have them move over that way. They can start to form a garrison. Everything's going to move to Changsha. Set all to march. So some forces will remain, of course. Um, right. 41st Division's quite beaten. So they're going to remain in place. Everything else can move. Okay. Eleventh division. Hmm. Right, eleventh division is going to pull back to Xinjiang. The reason for that is I want to build up forces here. I need to have enough forces in the field to actually beat them, and I'd rather have these forces uh, sit on a uh, friendly location until we build up to that point. Right, supplies are desperately needed here. Okay, so we do have 34th Division as well as some tanks and armor. Well, yeah, uh, armor and a little bit of artillery. We do need information on this area here. Hmm. Is that a navigable river? Does make one wonder. I 
I do have knife division over here. What I'm going to do then is I am going to march knife division down to Nanchang. I think they will be the ones to make the difference there. As well as some armor. So yes, they're going to march to Nanchang. Okay, uh, I'm fairly happy with that for the moment in time. Uh, I need information regarding this area. Supposedly 12,000 troops here. Hmm. Keep up the bombardment. Right, garrison unit here. So what I'll do is I can have them march on to this location. Well, then again, I need to defeat these forces in the field here. Uh, so I'll march these forces down. Uh, the reason being, I need to sort of assess what the threat level is there. And then at least I can try to um, free up the garrison over here, the 25th Division. If I get us in the city, there are these forces, and at least we have them able and free to be used. Uh, so we'll go with that for the time being. Have a cast, have a cast, have a cast. It's not too bad. Uh, yeah, we'll go for that, and we'll see how things turn out there the following time. I need to have a better understanding of the situation. Hmm. Okay, let's hope that with the extra reconnaissance flights in the area, it will actually make a legitimate difference. Would be very nice if it did. Very, very nice. And this is what I'm talking about when I say I made mistakes. And that I'm still learning as well. I think people will have this assumption that I understand more about the game than I really do. It's like I'm still learning as well as you guys. This is why I enjoy this. This is why I generally do keep coming back to this. I mean, how long is this series at the moment? Fuck me, it must be... It's definitely... I don't know, maybe a day, two days? Something in that length of time now? It's a long time, really. I mean, it's a long time. <laughs> to commit to something. But, you know, it's worth it. Generally, it's worth it. What the Germans needed was an actual uh, industry and an actual economy that wasn't going to collapse. <laughs> hmm, sub chaser. I was very, very lucky there. Very. Very lucky, but she's going to be shelled now. <sighs> Bloody hell. She really wants that. We actually got a hit back on her. That's rather nice. Hmm. That's rather interesting, then. So he decides to actually submerge due to damage. And we only receive three shell heads. That's not too bad, you know. Yeah, I'm actually convinced that the AI submarines do have effectively unlimited ammunition. I really don't know. Unless I'm just uh, seeing different submarines and they are just really damn good at actually recycling. Well, just cycling over that uh, ammunition. Because I swear to God, they just never seem to run out. That's fine, we'll blow them from the waters if we have to. Which we do. We very much do have to.
Ah, excuse me. Dragon. See, I've seen, uh, is it Otkreek? I think it's Otkreek. I know there's a book around about that name. That one looks rather interesting. Would you recommend it? I'm sure it's Otkreek or Ost or something. It looks intriguing anyway. Though I really do need to commit to reading Empires and, well, Empire and Barbarians. Um, I think it was the for the Rise of Europe. I can't remember the actual full title. I need to commit to reading something. I can't be like flitting back and forth, but you know, I think I'm going to commit to the late antiquity period. Hmm. To destroy my combat air patrol. <laughs> Shangri La. <laughs> I like that. That's a good amount of casualties right by now. Hmm. I'll just take a look at it. Oh yes, these, uh, these planes are without target now. I mean, the fact that we actually <laughs> captured and destroyed the entire Chinese army there was very, very nice. But that's the great thing. I mean, we're going to have these forces available to use elsewhere now. And I think I will concentrate on just securing all of China under our control. I think that would be very, very good. Okay, there we go. Reconnaissance run. At the end of the day, reconnaissance is always going to be handy. Wow, okay. They're going to get uh, potentially butchered. 68 zeros. I mean, once they break through that... They're going to have to go up against the AA. Once they actually escape the AA, they're still going to be chased down by zero. So the Allies could actually lose a lot of them. Uh, fun fact, Peter Boot, I just shut my washing machine. I have an, an open personal Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I like that. Okay, hopefully we can actually shoot down a good number of the Allied aircraft here. You think you'd be able to overwhelm the enemy, but I suppose it comes to a point where there's actually too many zeros in the air. I mean, they're putting up a fight. Okay, we'll skip forward this, see how we go. Congo, okay. No Japanese losses. They lost uh, six Falcons and a Warhawk. And Congo took no damage. Yep. Um, so, guys, what do you reckon the chances are of this 139 WH3 against um, at least 50 zeros? I, I don't think they've got a chance in hell, have they? This is actually working out quite well. We're actually destroying the uh, Allied uh, air power in the area. And if we take down some of the Mitchells, that'd be great news. There we go, all three of them destroyed. Superb. As rather silly of them. Interesting, only says two. They're not exactly going to be coming back from that. Yeah, yeah, it's the soundtrack from uh, Darkest Hour, Heart of Iron. To be fair, I'm considering buying a Heart of Iron 1 to actually get to the soundtrack, or just buying Heart of Iron 1 soundtrack just to add to it to see if I could use that. And that's going to be another free Mitchells dead. This is great! End of day, these are Mitchells that were heading over here, and now they're trying to attack Kitabutai, and they're not going to make it. Assuming so, anyway. They do have some good defensive fire, though, and we do lose a zero, that's a shame. God damn. Let's see what the uh, results are. 
one destroyed. Oh, wow. The Mitchells actually survived. It's rather impressive. I suppose the issue is the fact that they do have that really good defensive fire. <laughs> and this is it. We need aircraft that can actually handle them. Okay, here we go. Let's go forward here, see what the results are. Yeah, I mean, these Mitchells are very well defended. It might be due to the fact of the actual uh, altitude as well. Well, they are diving, so that's good. There we go, Mitchell down. So yeah, the, zero, uh, the Mitchells seem to be operating at about low altitude, which is great. This is where the Zeros are most uh, maneuverable as well. Okay, see what the results are. A few of them make it through, which is actually quite uh, uh, unsettling. Don't hit. Good. Thank God for that. Okay, see what the results are. Okay, two uh, two zeros destroyed. Uh, we do de uh, blah, blah, blah. we do destroy a Mitchell and damage two others. We do destroy three B three three nine Ds. That's actually quite a lot of aircraft. They do have a significant amount. Okay. They are really trying here. Chikuma. Okay, that's another two zeros destroyed. I think it's the actual fatigue that might begin to the pilots, and obviously the planes will need... Well, their planes are... pretty rough shape at the moment. Uh, well, they are losing numbers here. Uh, check the kills of your pilots, please, after. <laughs> ah, indeed. Quite cool. Baldwin. In fairness, I could probably go for a double attack over there. Right, Baton. Uh, we are going to have to starve out uh, Baton. It's a shame that we're having to use so much force here. So I think what we might do is actually uh, move away some extra forces, but we'll see. Wow. Okay. I think we might just have to cancel the bombardment. <laughs> That's pretty dire. In fairness, I could move a division out of there and probably survive. Yeah, I, I can move a division out. Move a division out. Hmm. I don't know, what do you guys reckon? Do we go for a deliberate attack at Singapore? That is the big, big question here. I really don't know. Supposedly we could. Supposedly. I just don't want to lose so many men. We may give it a go, though, to be fair. Hmm. 
A deliberate attack here, that's rather brave. There we go, 1,000 casualties. That's brilliant. 122 squads destroyed. Uh, I take a few days and bring some medium bombers down. Uh, down to Singapore, uh, Singapore. Yeah, the guard are going to take a long time. The issue is if I move those horses over there, they assault, and that is a big problem. I do have divisions on the way, so in fairness, I could build up time. Uh, I could build up forces with time to be at such a degree where when I cross over, and, and it inevitably will be a shock attack, we will have such a large amount of force, it may just be enough to smash them. But that is so difficult. It's one of those of, like, what do I accept, really? Uh, losses of men or less losses of aircraft. And in reality, it's a difficult one. The men aren't... I mean, they're replaceable, of course, but it does take time. It takes a lot of time. If we lose the ground battle, we'll lose, we'll lose it. There's no going back. We need troops on the ground. Can't do anything without troops on the ground. Interestingly, no naval attacks this turn. Well, air to naval attacks. Oh, a new destroyer. And new... It's really nice. Air Force unit. Hmm. Okay. In fairness, I could really. I suppose the numbers, well, the AA over Singapore couldn't be too dissimilar to that over Hong Kong, and Hong Kong was a very heavily defended target. Uh, so in fairness, I could actually move a great number of bombers from China. Hmm. These guys do need rest. What is the aviation support? Zero. So I need to move support here. Yeah, quite heavy uh, fatigue, but uh, let's get the pilots. That's a lot of pilots for so many aircraft. <laughs> yeah, we'll look at the pilots, don't worry. The thing is, though, you've got to remember that um, the actual success in France was a surprise, uh, both to the Allies and to the Germans themselves. They didn't expect that. So it's one of those of... Um, they couldn't really repeat that. I mean, they could, of course, repeat it on local scale, but the thing is, the Germans didn't quite understand it themselves how they actually managed to um, succeed in those circumstances. It's very difficult to pull something off like that in the Soviet Union due to the just grand scale of it. Even if they push them all the way out to the Euros, why would the Soviets stop fighting? It's one of those things, really. It's, it's a very interesting question. It's one of those things that really does need to be explored more and more. Um, new his well, new ways of thinking do need to be um, examined, really. Yeah, it was definitely a surprise. It was a surprise to everybody. <laughs> oh dear. Right, what was I doing? Okay. I'll pull Kiributai, uh, Kiributai out of here now. I'm not too uh, comfortable with the amount of uh, attention she's garnering. Hmm. 
so little troops there. So little troops over here, supposedly. You know, in fairness, it might be that we literally just drop troops off down this way. It may be that we do that. Okay, load these troops. I'm not even kidding. It might be that we do that. Yeah, that's way too much. Still too much. That's difficult. Uh, troop loads pathetic, so I do need to get some more amphibious transports out this way. Right, head over here to Patati. At least the BBs. <laughs> hmm. Right. Uh, let's see. Minefields is what I'm looking for. I'm not aware of any allied ones, of course. There will be. There will be allied minefields out there, definitely. Look at that one. I mean, Arto is going to hell of a lot. Okay. I do need to actually maintain the rest of these minefields. Port Arthur especially. Okay, but quickly we'll go back over here and check on the pilots. Um, let's see. Not ground forces. Okay, so our greatest pilot is over here in the Yamada detachment. So he's accredited with 13 kills. That's actually quite a lot there. Very impressive. Uh, let's try and take a closer look at actually of the pilot of Kiributai. Oh yeah, we've lost a lot of zeros. Not many kills here. Look at all those missions. Uh, what are our top pilot? Just one second. Our top pilot would be Kusumoto. Indeed. 80 missions. Pretty impressive. Okay. Uh, I can use a defensive strategy in China to conserve resources in order to take and extract resources from Indonesia and Burma. Yeah, that's what we're really trying to do. Is uh, what we, It's a difficult one. Uh, because I, of course, need to win the battle in China. I might push up on those troops over there and see where they are. Uh, what I'm trying to do is really push up to these bases over here. Basically push beyond the actual uh, bases that matter. Establish something of a um, perimeter fence around China. Make it so I actually do have in place a defensive uh, network that will prevent the Chinese from actually interfering with the resource production. Um, we really do need that. We really, really do need to stop them. From actually <laughs> interrupting that. Uh, Singapore's not even a week long under siege. Yeah, that's a true thing. I suppose it seems like it's under siege much longer than it really feels like. Due to the way the game is. It's like a day feels like an absolute like, age. <laughs> hmm. Right. -o. It 
we need to get smart, really. We really do need to get smart. Okay. So, uh, another thing is, let's see. Goibutai will, in fact, head down uh, this way. Naval attack. Don't know why I'm using bombs. That's a really low altitude. There we go, 20. I'd actually resize to fit ship would be a good one. Uh, actually, I'll turn that off for the time being, so no resize uh, for the moment. And we'll resize it in the future, actually, which would be a good thing. Okay. The vowels. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bring uh, Goi Butai down towards Singapore. And I really do believe that if these numbers are any way correct, that we should really just launch a springboard invasion of Sumatra. Uh, we will have uh, Goi Butai, Kido Butai, uh, Bushido, basically the vast majority of the ja Imperial Japanese fleet to support the attack over here. Uh, we will be able to fly flights from uh, Malaya and Borneo. I think it could be the best way to do things. Uh, these aircraft need to recover. They need to recover ASAP. We simply can't uh, have them stand by. I could even move them over onto the uh, escort carriers in Founders. Hmm. Alright, don't load supplies like that. We don't need that many. Naval Guard's ready anyway. In fairness, uh, where should I send them? <laughs> Good question. But I think I'll send them down to Borneo. Alright, we'll have them uh, set up to the base down this way. Da, da, da. Not on that way. Um, let's see. Their range is too short. Right, they're not actually carrying fuel, though, which is good. Do medieval siege. <laughs> Indeed. Right, no activity over this way. Uh, they're closing in now, which is good. Okay. A complete blockade would starve very soon, considering the number of people in the city. Well, I think what we need to take a look at, then, is let's uh, consider our own troops over here at Singapore. So, we are obviously uh, able to bring uh, well res blah, 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 resources in here, supplies in here. But it seems like their supply requirement isn't going to be too dissimilar to our own. So if we're requiring something like four to 5,000 supplies a day, then that's not going to be far off for them either. And if they can't actually produce, then that will quickly go down. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So our forces are mobilizing over here, which is good news. Uh, new forces are on their way here. It's very good that they actually did launch a deliberate attack. Okay, looks like Chinese forces are on their way. 13,000 here, supposedly. Don't know here. Okay, I think we will consider launching a deliberate attack. Uh, they must be starting to run low on resources, so I think if we actually push them, they will actually give out. Right, loading resources. Uh, resources on the way to Tokyo. Torahara. Back you go. Not many resources there are, though. 
Ah, oh, actually. Knows a lot of resources though, never mind, I take that back. Right, I'm loading, you'll be done soon. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this AMC over here. You don't have any... I actually do have aircraft. Oh, you do have capacity for aircraft. Hmm. Right, divide the unit. Transfer to ship. That's fine. So what we're going to do then is we're going to send this odd merchant ship out to the Aleutian Isles. Is it Aleutian Isles? I forget what they're actually called. It's Aleutian. Uh, to the Bering Sea anyway. I think it's Aleutian. I can't, uh, yeah, the Aleutian Islands. There we go. Oh, I thought you could feel a sneeze coming. <coughs> Excuse me, what? Yeah, we need aviation support here. Uh, thankfully it's on its way. I... I know it's like not the greatest thing to actually be heading up there to lay mines. Uh, but in the, in the end... The reason I'm doing that is because I do kind of expect to lose midways eventually. Now, these are actually quite nice. I like the fact that we have them. Right, is the Naval Guard on board? Right, loaded now, loaded supplies. I like, but it tells you that. Right, so cancel that. Okay. The thing is, I don't know what we're dealing with over here. So I think what we need to do then is potentially head over this way. So we'll head down that way. I need to figure out what we're hand well, what we're going to be dealing with. Right, I'm going to send those supplies back over here. Though, you know what? Um, you'll head here. Then I can pick up those troops. Okay, you need to head back to Japan and load some small supplies. Okay. And... Yep. They're heading back. I really am considering, like, selling out of her. See, you're not treated as a naval hex. Or is it because we don't have any engineers? Hmm. Maybe due to supplies more than anything. Potentially so. Okay, superb. Those resources will move where they need to now. Uh, let's take a look at Tokyo. Now, 
Right, Tokyo is actually producing, which is fantastic. Yeah, there's resources enough for the time being. Brilliant, okay. Uh, so what we will be doing then is once we bring these uh, resources in here. That's good, we can actually, uh, we're actually bringing that uh, production back up. It's, uh, right, it's not like they can take mid away in one turn, you could always send reinforcements. Well, the thing is, um, I'm preparing for carriers. I really am preparing for the day that the Americans do send uh, carriers to Midway, which they will do. That is, if there's going to be anywhere, and I mean legitimately anywhere, that the Americans strike, it will be Midway. It will happen. So the thing is, we've got to make it as difficult as possible to take Midway. Midway really is the linchpin in this. Like, if you imagine this island really is the shield. If they take Midway, they will move into here. That is a definite. As long as we control Midway, they really can't. They're always going to be running a risk. We're always going to have a base from which we can stage. We're always going to have some friendly port out here in the storm. We're always going to have that. So, if there's any strike to come, it will be at Midway. So, at the end of the day, the only way they can take Midway, even if they bomb the ever and live in a hell out of the island, it's not going to matter. As long as they have, as long as we have boots on the ground, it doesn't matter. We will hold on to Midway. Midway must be made into a fortress. It must be. It's an issue that's so heavily damaged. Uh, we don't have any AA at Midway, but it would be a very good idea to move AA there in the future. Very good idea. We are moving engineers, and engineers are superb, as that is going to allow us to actually build up um, fortifications. Uh, but we'll move on here. Issued orders. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, breaking up Kitty Wood in the future, then, potentially. Uh, basically, spreading them out a little bit, bring them with other battleships, uh, would be a good idea. Dun dun da 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 dun dun da 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 uh, but yeah moving um uh, bloody AA to midway would be great. It actually really dramatically help out the survival chances to be fair. So I think what we'll do then is actually move some AA from uh Japan potentially. Japan. The issue is I don't wanna move too much because I don't wanna lose it. But I suppose it's better out there than elsewhere. I'll check on the condition of Hiru next turn. See how she's doing, basically. She'll be ready in a couple days. Right, Finn back. Hmm. Yeah, the Hearts of Iron uh, soundtrack is fantastic. Finn back, diamond deep. Yeah, if the day comes, you need AA in Japan, you're screwed. That's a good point. Very good point. Unless we have a Doolittle raid, even then, that's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, we'll look at what AA assets we can actually spare from Japan, then. We are getting dramatically more active. Maybe some heavy artillery against ships landed as well. That's a good point. I don't know if they actually do have an ability, uh, but it wouldn't be too bad. Even a little bit of artillery could be a good idea. Ooh. Well, that was very lucky. Finback. Wow, he actually got a hit but no explosion. That's uh, pretty remarkable. I'm glad these submarines are out over this way, so I'm not doing too much round truck at the moment. I do need to really organize things to a greater degree. We are starting to do that. We are starting to really get things uh, going. Right. 
severe damage. Wow, okay. I-159 is potentially a goner. Somebody taking a water. Yeah, I-159 needs to head to midway. I-159 is sunk. Wow, okay. That's a really bad loss. That is the first submarine that we've lost to a destroyer in that way. And I-159, wow, okay, that's that's actually quite a heavy loss. Uh, these submarines are actually really valuable to me. That's not good. That's not something I can easily replace. I'm really not happy about that. Uh, not a huge amount I can do about it, sadly. At the end of the day, these submarines aren't very effective against destroyers. Okay, the battle is concerned not to those patrols. Hmm. Yeah, the destroyers are getting better at our jobs. Interesting amount of ships over that way. I'm rather bemused as to why my dive bombers, are, dive bombers and torpedo bombers aren't attacking for Gilbert Tide. Right, the concert is definitely more active now. Oh, there we go. Not a huge amount of Valzor Cades, but we'll see how it affects that. Out. Did you hang out? Uh, I began my first going campaign as the Allies, CV in Hawaii was torpedoed upon departure. They first have some ASW task forces just outside the harbour. Yeah, good idea. But that's really lucky for the Japanese to actually have torpedoed Lexington. Really lucky. Loading below deck. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, these ships are worth points, which is good there. It's tonnage sank, and it's uh, tonnage that the Allies are denied. Okay. Uh, we lose a zero, but we do sink something, which is good. They didn't lose any... Um... Oh, actually, no, they lost two buffaloes and a hurricane, so that's good. Uh, city of Hankow is sank. No, oh, well, sunken. Uh, well, sinks. Uh, Munda, Mundra survives. Right, just the one escort, well, that's rather brave. <laughs> PT Poe. Well, in fairness, we have to get rid of these. I'd imagine it'd be easy to strafe them. I don't imagine any success. Those are awful to deal with. Okay, at least a zero is responding. Uh, one of them is destroyed, which is really good. Oh, 
Oh yes, the bombardment over here. I completely forgot about that. I was a little bit confused then. Uh, but this should do very really nice. I think we did set out a deliberate attack here as well, which is great. I mean, it's the first bombardment we've done for a long time, to be fair. So let's see how effective it is. That's not bad. I mean, at the end of the day, that is uh, a bombardment nonetheless. We can continue that. That's great. It will support our land forces, which is very nice. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot to cancel the bombardment at uh, Bataan. Uh, yeah, the number of B-25s seems to be slackening, which is very nice. I mean, we have, sang uh, we have destroyed quite a few, actually. Yeah, I need to cancel that. I don't know why these losses are so extreme. It's only a bombardment. But yes, we definitely need to cancel that. Pretty rough. Yeah, I really wish I'd cancelled the uh, bombardment of Bataan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult thing. I mean, once we do get uh, the engineers into Borneo, and once we do start that airfield being, well, uh, running that airfield effectively, then it's going to work out just fine. Uh, I need something with a heavier armament to really take on B-25s. So then, how about how you do, my friend? They uh, disappear. It's interesting. Okay, first of all, cancel the bombardment at Bataan. So a lot of assault volume. Uh, what I will do though is I will take a division out of here. I'll take the 10th. Have them move to Clark. Send them to march over here. For Eber. Okay, does the base have a garrison requirement? It doesn't, which is good. So move them all out that way. And F-40 might do a fine job of taking those uh, B-25s down. <laughs> Look at them all on that submarine. I can't believe the loss of I um, of a submarine out that way. That was really, really quite bad. Uh, the fuel's almost arrived now, which is good. Okay, that's, those are different numbers. There's not many troops here, but we just need to get that.
Well, they are starting to recover. It is taking a long time. Uh, I suppose they need to come off of the um, strategic movement. <laughs> Nothing around Palmyra. move go with time Severely doubt that. Uh, Katori just needs fuel, I do believe. Hmm. I find that rather weird. Intriguing. Either way, these uh, destroyers will head out. They're going to support them. I don't know why their fuel is so low, that's rather weird. Okay, they're probably waiting for their new ships to finish construction so they have overwhelming numbers when they attack. Yeah, I probably imagine they would do. <laughs> okay. At least we have success over here in China. Hmm. We do have time, which is good. Right, those resources are on their way into Tokyo. Should be good. Uh, yeah, Natori has no oil. Uh, strange that we can't refuel her from the port, though, considering that we do have fuel in the port. Maybe due to the fact that she needs to be docked, or maybe it's just uh, we transferred so much fuel out this turn that we can't do it again. Uh, so we'll have to do it potentially next turn. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so we're going to move um, over here. Reinforcements are on their way. Fucking hell, 13 new BBs. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. But I believe this is where we'll be finishing the stream off of today. So thank you so very much, guys, for watching. Uh, I'm doing these as a little bit of short ones due to the fact I'm uh, obviously at work now in the week. Yeah, weekend is a different story, but we'll see. So thank you all very much for supporting me. Uh, I have been wondering as well, would you guys like me to use the actual War in the Pacific soundtrack? But what I would have to ask is if I do use the soundtrack, it means I receive absolutely no uh, advertisement. Well, advertisement uh, revenue. So it would have to be one of those where I'd have to receive a higher number of patrons to actually make it worthwhile. Uh, but it's something to consider. So, yes, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you do consider supporting me, you can do so via PayPal, uh, Patreon, or multiple methods. Thank you all. Have a great evening. And do let me know down in the comments what you think should be our next strategy. Until next time, goodbye for now.